What is going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Treeb Talks here. Now, originally, when I wanted to sit down and make this preview video, I was not too excited. I mean, obviously, the Jaguars are 1-3, and, and they beat the Indianapolis Colts in Week 1, and then after that, just a bunch of false hope, a close game against the Titans, and then after that, getting brought back down to earth by a Miami Dolphins team and the Cincinnati Bengals, along with some injuries to guys like DJ Hayden, who, I mean, meh, doesn't really contribute that much. But you got some guys that are also questionable, like LaVishka Chenault, who also might not play in this game. But, as I sit here and realize, the AFC South might be in the middle of an apocalypse right now, and the Jaguars have a chance to swoop in and take advantage. I'm going to explain. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans, week number five, preview. So what I mean by the AFC South apocalypse is this. So everybody loves good conspiracy theorists, right? And that's what we're going to be in this video. Because why would we just sit here and decide to be A, super realistic, and B, you know, just super down on the Jacksonville Jaguars? Because that's my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team. We don't want to do that. Right now, what we want to do is we want to think positive. We want to think about how the hell are the Jacksonville Jaguars going to dig themselves out of this hole that they put themselves in? How are they going to dig themselves out of this hole that is left by injuries and this defense being completely god-awful and not letting them be in any games? Well, here's how. So, the year 2020. It has been decimated by the coronavirus, COVID-19. The Tennessee Titans got hit with COVID-19 the absolute hardest out of any NFL team. That sucks. I'm not going to wish COVID-19 on anybody. It is a literal national pandemic. I am not going to like make light of that. But the Titans made light of the situation themselves by deciding to practice and deciding to hold a workout. And the NFL is going to crack down on that like never before. Pro Football Talk... Uh, released an article today saying that the punishment for the Titans could be historic. So, you know, you it kind of makes you think, what can that possibly mean? What could that mean for the Tennessee Titans? I'm thinking that that means, you know, they can't really make the, t the Steelers loss. You know, they can't do anything about the game against Pittsburgh because they delayed that. It could be like the next two games could be forfeits. Like... It's going to be something that we have never seen before. And if they take those two lose, those next those next two games, it's like forfeits or something. Or if a forfeit is in any of the forefront for the Titans and the Jags are able to get some momentum or some you know leeway, some speed, then the Jaguars are right back into the division lead, or the division race at the very least, baby. And the Colts right now are kind of in a situation where they kind of have a tough schedule coming up. And the Jags have that head-to-head -head victory over the Indianapolis Colts. And who do the Jaguars play this week? The 0-4 Houston Texans. The 0-4 Houston Texans just fired Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien is not good at what he does. He did take this team to the playoffs, you know, consistently, which is a good thing. But the talent around this team, you know, was, was built and, you know, it wasn't by him. It wasn't by him. Um, obviously, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, Deshaun Watson, J.J. Watt, you know, the list goes on about, you know, these leaders, these veterans, and all these guys that, you know, were around in Houston. He traded DeAndre Hopkins away for, you know, basically nothing. For, like, dirt, essentially, to the Arizona Cardinals. And now, he is out of the job. He's not there. Now, a lot of people are going to say that's a good move, and it is. You know, to get fired that early, I still think it's crazy. Like, it's still crazy to think about that he did get fired that early. But, but, there is still, still, you know, teams don't necess don't often just flip just like that right away. They don't just get better right after firing a head coach, right after firing, you know, a general manager. It takes a little bit, you know. So, the Jaguars, right now, Maybe the successor of a global pandemic and a stupid idiot franchise 
downgrading and downplaying a national pandemic and a team firing their coach and their general manager and having a head-to-head victory against a team that is currently first place in the division. 2020 could get really weird for the AFC South. Now, how are the Jaguars going to be able to win this game against the Houston Texans, you might add? Well, it starts with this. Stop Deshaun Watson. Stop a nosebleed. Like, do a three and out. I would love to see a three and out. That would be amazing. I would love to see Brian Anger, ex-Jacksonville Jaguar that we drafted in the third round for Houston. No place for Houston. I would love to see him come onto the field. Jaguar love. Ex-Jaguar love. You know, picked over Russell Wilson. So clearly is a better player than Russell Wilson, obviously. So, <laughs> We're having a lot of fun in this video, ladies and gentlemen. So, we want to see him a lot, and we need this defense just to play good. We need this defense to do something. This Houston offensive line is by no means a terrific offensive line. And you would have thought last week, going up against Cincinnati, who also, wouldn't you know, doesn't have a terrific offensive line, that the Jaguars would finally get some sacks, finally get some pressure. But no, they didn't. You know, Joe Burrow played really well. But if you're not going to get pressure against Sean Watson, this is going to be a long afternoon. Because Gardner Minshew can only do so much. His offense can only do so much. Because this offense plays really solid, really good football, in my opinion. I think this offense has played extremely, extremely well under Gardner Minshew's leadership. And with all the players and all the pieces that are thrown in to this Jaguars offense. Now... Let's talk about Garner Minshew for a second. There is talk. There's been talk all the time, you know, all year. Po- you know, before the season started and to now, about the tank for Trevor Train. And, you know, you, you're a team that goes 1-3, and three, and Gardner Minshew's your quarterback. And right now you are in line for a top-10 pick. And, you know, there's still talk about this tank for Trevor. Um... Hype this type this tank for Trevor you know type of type of movement. I don't I don't know. I don't think the Jaguars are going to be able to do that. You know I still I still hold firm in my belief before the season starts. I don't think a team under Gardner Minshew's leadership will be able to tank for Trevor Lawrence. I don't think that this team is going to be bad enough for the Jaguars to have an opportunity to take Trevor Lawrence. But if the Jaguars do do bad, you know, this defense gives up 40 points a game, record-setting bad defense, which you can see it. You can see it all over the field because this is a bad, bad defense. Then do the Jaguars take Trevor Lawrence? That is the question. That is a hard question to answer. That's a generational talent looking at you right in the face in Trevor Lawrence. And it's, it's, it's a deal of this. If you're a team, you have the number one overall pick, and you got Trevor Lawrence staring at you right in the face, you don't just turn that down. It's hard. It's hard to turn that down. You can't. You know, you can't. So the Jaguars do find themselves in that situation. I do think they do take Trevor Lawrence. But they may be in a, you know, a high draft capital position at the number one spot as well. I mean, they can trade their number one overall pick, get more first-round picks. You know, they love doing that, trading for picks and trying to get as much value as they can. But... You know, we'll see. We will see. I like this offense. I like what this offense is producing. I think the offense just needs to continue to be consistent and, you know, continue to do what they're doing in order to be Houston. This defense just needs to step up and just play average. This defense needs to play average. I mean, they went up against Minnesota. Minnesota has a below-average defense lost to Minnesota. So the Jaguars just need to be average on defense, and that is the big goal is to play really good defensive football. But if my coronavirus pandemic crazy conspiracy theory comes true, don't say that I didn't predict it from the beginning. But this could be the start of something crazy. This could be the start of something beautiful. This could be the start of us getting excited again. And then you got everybody else in the AFC South will definitely hate on us, saying, oh, you needed all this to happen in order for you to get there. But the only thing that matters is that we got there. And the only thing that matters this week is beating the Houston Texans.
And that was the Jaguars versus Texans, week number five preview. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Dream Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget, you can hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.